Okay, friends, here we are, back in the Pimax Crystal, and we're running an open XR, and again, going to that place where frame rates go to die, New York City. We're going to be taking off from LaGuardia, and we're testing open XR, not through the Pimax open XR runtime, but through Steam. Steam has its own option for XR now, open XR, and you access it by going through the uh, Steam VR settings panel. And I'll show you how to do that in another video. It's uh, a couple of steps, but it's nothing too complicated. And I'm sure eventually they'll just have a big button and options that you can push that will say, push this friend and you too shall be an open XR. Well, it might, it might just say open XR or something, but hopefully they'll make it simpler. And one of the nice things is that you can still use Matt Buccianeri's open XR toolkit, which is absolutely amazing. Now, as I'm watching this uh, video here and doing the soundtrack for it, uh, we're getting ready to start the 152 at LaGuardia. And I'm using my, uh, my Logitech uh, switches panel and my radio panel, although the radio panel I'm not going to use very much today. But the switches are nice. I can use it to start all the masters and electronics and then check the mags and turn the mags on and all the stuff that you do in an airplane it's pretty cool now over the last few days I haven't posted any videos because I've having been having he said clumsily I've been having a lot of trouble getting the uh, getting the performance I want in VR that I used to have um, and I think I tracked some of the problems down to the power hub as Omni Whatever noted in his review, the power hub works great, but the connector, the USB line that runs from the power hub to the computer, connects at the power hub in a pretty loose, limber, and wonky way. So what he did was uh, tape it into the receptacle. So that's what I've done. I just took a loop of masking tape, wrapped it around the uh, cable end, and pulled it tight into the connector. And then I double-sided tape the uh, power hub itself down to the desk so it's, it won't move around and I've noticed that that has cleared up a whole bunch of the artifacting that I was seeing uh, what I'm not seeing is a really great frame rate and uh, I mean I'd have to go into open XR and do some overrides and I think being back with steam even in open XR <laughs> here look at me I'm taking look at me hold my beer I'm taking off across all the runways. Oh man, I'd be in so much trouble in real life. I just didn't want this to be a hugely long video. Uh, no, what was I talking about? Um, you can still use Matt's program to adjust things, but you have to use the, uh, the Steam VR settings, I think, to set the initial, uh, to set the initial resolution. And I've got it set to about uh, 4,500 by something in there, and I've overridden it to 3,000 by 3,800 in OpenXR, I think. We're just going to stooge around here for a second. I'm just looking at the colors, and they look okay on my screen, but in my headset, I felt that they're a little bit washed out. And I think that comes down to settings that I chose in the NVIDIA... Uh, control panel. I think I'm going to have to muck about with that a bit. Now here, uh, you can see I've gone into uh, into the Pimax client to turn on eye tracking. See what difference that makes. Um, Steam recognizes it, but doesn't know what to do with it. I don't think it's going to make any difference. I just wanted to try it and see. Eliminate it as a possible source of some of the problems I had with uh, video clarity and jittering. Still get some stuttering, but I think that's a Steam thing. And uh, VR, VR Flight Sim guy, Steve, he did a video on it, so I'm going to have to review that. Because uh, the stuttering thing from Steam is annoying. And I've talked to iRacers and people using other headsets, and they have the same issue. So uh, I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but uh, again, all these softwares are developing. They're in the, for Steam, I think it's a fairly mature software package, but, but the OpenXR stuff is new. So, 
you're going to have to be a little bit patient. And Pimax, well, their software and the firmware is uh, a lot better than it was when I started beta testing. It was okay then, but now it's a lot better. Battery life has improved like crazy. Using this power hub, I haven't changed batteries in a couple of days. And when I power off the computer, uh, but leave the hub on, the, the headset charges. I think Reinhardt, a friend of mine, uh, tested this and he did a video on his channel. Uh, he took a battery right down to zero and, uh, you know, put it in the headset, turned the computer off, and uh, over two and a half hours it charged from zero back to four bars. Um, and I find if I leave it off, leave the computer off overnight, uh, it charges right back to five bars, which is crazy. So, and also if I play with it plugged in, I'm focusing on the landing here, looking at the far end of the runway. And they'll come to arrest me, I'm sure, at the end of it. But um, I think I think this is a big step forward to have OpenXR on Steam. And once they get it a little bit easier to access and use, it'll be even better. Creek and groan. They got all the little airplane sounds looking sounding real good. I do love what Asobo has done with this. I'm looking forward to uh, Flight Sim 2024 because I think it'll be built from the ground up for VR rather than having VR assembled onto it as an afterthought, which is what happened with 2020. Not that it doesn't work great, but it, it took Asobo a while to get there. All right, I think we're going to shut this down pretty quick. Thanks for watching, and see if you can try Steam XR in the Pimax Crystal or whatever headset you use on Steam. Thanks for stopping by. I, uh, I appreciate it.